welcome into today's video. We have an exciting one. Hope you guys are doing great out there as always. Today, in this video, we're gonna talk about five stocks that I believe are gonna at least double in their market cap, double up their stock price. And we're talking big stocks too, okay? I'm not talking about some super small companies with like a $500 million market cap or something like that, okay? We're talking about big dogs, okay? When I'm talking about big stocks, I'm talking market caps, over $100 billion. And let me just tell you, there's a lot of money to be made in some of these stocks when you can get in some of these phenomenal companies. A lot of people think like, well, if it's a big, if it's a big market cap, there's no money to be made there. BS, okay? There's a lot of money to be made in these type of stocks, okay? You look at something like Apple, okay? Apple is a great company, phenomenal company, okay? That stock first hit a $100 billion market cap around 2008, okay? Then it hit $200 billion market cap around 2010, $300 billion market cap in 2011, $400 billion market cap in 2012, $500 billion market cap in 2013, as well as hitting a $600 billion market cap in 2013. Then the stock dips, dips, dips. You get a huge buying opportunity. Next thing you know, stock's up to $700 billion in 2015. Another dip in the stock, and then up to $800 billion in 2017, all the way up to $900 billion just after 2018. Then in 2019, it hits a trillion dollars for the first time ever. Then it has another big dip in the stock price. It bounces back to 1.2 trillion, then 1.4 trillion in the end of 2019, kind of going into 2020. We get the huge market sell off, stock goes way down, all the way down to a trillion dollars. Then it bounces back. Next thing you know, it's at 1.6 trillion, 1.8 trillion. And here today, Apple stock is over 2 trillion dollars, okay? That's a perfect example of a great company that was over a $100 billion market cap that had, you know, years and years and years of runway in front of it, huge growth in front of it, and Apple stock has now 20 x in the past 12 years, okay? So literally, if I, when I first started investing, if I just put $1,000 in Apple stock, and when I started investing, that would be worth $20,000 today, but it would actually be worth even more than that, because here's the thing, okay? Apple started paying dividends about five or six years ago. So now the dividends you're getting from that stock are also insane, okay? Never mind. I mean, the dividend yield you would be getting based upon your shares that you bought 12 years ago, ridiculous, okay? And think about that. Back then in 2008, the iPhone had already come out. Like, it had already been shown off. You already had a ton of excitement going around the Apple brand. They already had the iPod come back years and years before that. And uh, there was just a lot of growing excitement around Apple. And here you were with a perfect example of a company that, hey, they, they were over 100 billion. And man, if you bought that company, you made bank, okay? And by the way, I could go through a long list of companies that have done that, including some that we're gonna talk about here today. So yeah, it's not just like you have to be in like the next a very good food company or the next planet or something like that in order to make money. Those stocks are amazing and you can, you know, if, if it works out with those stocks, it's absolutely phenomenal. But that's not the only stocks in the stock market to like make money with. And also keep in mind with something like Apple, you buy that in 2008, 2009, 2010, you're taking a pretty low level of risk, right? You just are. We're versus like a, a very company, a planet, like there's all those stocks were obviously much more risky when I started investing in those stocks than something like Apple was in 2008, 2009, 2010, okay? And so in this video, I'm not just gonna tell you about these five stocks, I'm gonna explain why, okay? Which is always the most important thing in these videos. Why do I, why do I have the conviction to come out and tell 100,000 plus people that are gonna see this video that these stocks are gonna 2X over the next five years, okay? That's a pretty big statement out there, right? So I hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, if you don't mind, smash that thumbs up button. It helps the YouTube channel out massively. It lets me know you guys enjoy a video like this where I get into some stocks that I think are gonna double or more than double over the course of the next five years. So I appreciate each and every one of you that are part of the Thumbs Up Squad. If you wanna join Stock Hub for absolutely free, I'll have that as probably the pinned comment down there. Like I said, that's absolutely free to join. You can talk stocks with a ton of other investors from all over the world, including, I think, I believe we have every single stock we're talking about here today has a chat in Stock Hub. So, you know, definitely enjoy that. All right, guys, let's start getting that. So first stock up of these five stocks that I believe is gonna double or more than double over the coming years is Amazing Zon, Amazon stock, ticker symbol AMZN. Now, when you first look at this, it's a 1.5, 1.6 trillion dollar company here today. And I mean, a double seems insane, right? 
but also it double seemed insane when it was at, you know, 200 billion and 400 billion and 800 billion and everything across the board, okay? So this company needs to go to a three trillion plus dollar market cap to double, okay? And I can tell you I'm pretty darn confident that this, this company's gonna double, okay? When you look at their business model, it is magic, okay? Amazon.com. Like you think that's gonna shrink or you think they're gonna continue to have revenues go up substantially over the coming years. I hope every single person watching this video said, yeah, yeah, Amazon.com and the Amazon app are gonna get a whole lot bigger in the coming years than they are now, right? I mean, if I went back to like a decade ago, I would buy something on Amazon maybe, oh gosh, maybe like once every couple months. And then next thing you know, you know, if we go back five years ago, I'm purchasing something on Amazon, you know, probably a couple times a month. And now I'm purchasing multiple times per week from Amazon okay it's just a, and that's just like a, think about how many people across like like wherever Amazon's at okay think about how many people are doing that and ordering more and more things from Amazon like they're just gonna become a bigger and bigger giant here in the future okay AWS Amazon Web Services are cloud product right is that gonna be bigger or smaller in five years than it is today? Obviously, it's gonna be gargantuanly bigger in five years than it is today, okay? Twitch, that continues to be a growth beast, okay? Amazon Pay, Amazon Logistics, Audible, Amazon Prime, like the Amazon Prime business. I mean, that's just a beast in itself, right? And then you have things like Whole Foods on top of that, and it's just like, you just look at Amazon, and at the end of the day, that's just a company that's gonna continue to grow massively over the next five, 10 years. It's just flat out, okay? Now, as far as this current year, they're expected to grow revenues by about 35%. That's a very, very nice number. But what cracks me up is next year, analysts have this company grown 18.3%. And that's amazing, okay? Let me let me not, you know, discredit 18.3% when you're a company that's doing, you know, roughly 400 plus billion dollars in revenue, okay? That's insane. There are very few companies that are doing that kind of revenue in general. Like Amazon's one of the highest revenue companies in the world now at this point in time, okay? If not the highest, right? And to be growing 18.3%, ridiculous. But I call BS on that number. This company's gonna grow 20% plus again next year, okay? I see this every time, like analysts will have them like finally growing less than 20%, and then Amazon always comes in with huge beats, and next thing you know, Amazon grows 25%, 30%, something like that. I've just seen it year after year. It's like, ooh, Amazon's finally not gonna grow 20%, and then they end up exceeding that number. So it happens every year. Don't be surprised at all if it happens again in 2021, okay? But when it comes to Amazon, it's not just about this is a revenue beast kind company and an overall great business model, it's about the profitability that is starting to expand exponentially for this company, okay? And profits are really starting to pour in. So if you go back to a year ago EPS, $23 per share. Current year, almost $35 per share EPS, okay? Current year, here in 2021, over $40 five dollars of eps expected and don't be surprised if next year they end up coming in with a number that's you know upwards of, of fifty dollars next year okay this is finally the the scale is getting to such big levels this is what a lot of investors have been waiting for for like a decade or two the profits to start pouring in and man are they starting to pour in huge okay absolutely huge 2020 through 2030 for Amazon will be the profit decade, okay? No doubt about that in my mind. This will be the, the decade that Amazon just has crazy profitability coming in. Whereas 2010 through 2020, that was kind of the big growth period for Amazon in terms of top line and being respected as one of the most important tech companies or companies just period in the entire world right now. For the Ford PNs company 60, and you know, this is a company that didn't even start taking profitability serious until like the last couple years, okay? So I mean, think about how much Amazon can expand their profitability over the next five, 10 years. Like it's gonna be ridiculous, right? So even though a 60 Ford P is like triple what the market trades at, it's actually pretty darn favorable considering how much profit growth this company will have. Like this is a company that will easily be doing $100 of EPS probably within the next five years, if not sooner than that. And probably a company that longer term can get to a place where they're doing 200 to $300 of EPS per year, okay? So when you look at that, I mean, geez, I mean, this company just has massive growth ahead of it, okay? So when I look at this company, 
I see it actually as being a fairly easy double up for this company to three trillion plus over the next five years. I actually don't think it's a stretch at all. I mean, the fact is top line is gonna to continue to beast for this company and bottom line is gonna be even more impressive for this company over the coming years. And then on top of that, you've got Jeff Bezos leading this company, right? There's no signs of Jeff Bezos letting off the gas, okay? This guy is still full go, you know, he's still moving ahead, right? There's gonna be way more products, way more services coming over the next five years that Amazon probably, it has kind of, you know, been working on the down low that we don't even know about yet that will end up being big things. AWS, right? That's the second most important part of Amazon's business and actually a huge profit machine for the company nowadays, right? Amazon Web Services, no one even like was even paying attention to that till like the last like three to five years. And no, like Amazon Web Services, if that was split apart as a company, it'd be one of the biggest companies in the world, right? So yeah, there's gonna be a lot more going. Elon Musk is on Jeff Bezos. He's coming for him, okay, in terms of richest people in the world. And, and you might think these guys are like, oh yeah, you know, they might say it in public. Oh yeah, I don't care to be the richest person in the world. BS, okay, these guys are all competitors. If Jeff Bezos doesn't want to get passed up by Elon Musk, no way, okay? He's going to do everything in his power to outcompete him. It's like saying, oh, the NFL quarterback, like these guys don't care like who's recognized as like the best quarterback in the NFL, right? It's all BS, okay? These guys are all about competition, trying to beat each other out. So Amazon stock, I had a feature this one as the first one of these five stocks. I can definitely see this being a $6,000 plus stock in the future, as long as obviously they don't split it, just based upon the fact that profits are gonna go crazy for this company, top line's gonna continue to beast, and you've got arguably the best businessman in the world leading this company, okay? So yeah, Amazon, it will be a double up stock. Number two of five here, which is a future 2X stock. This one I actually hold, it is Facebook, okay, ticker symbol FB on this one. This is a company that right now has a market capitalization a little under $800 billion. So definitely a big, big company, one of the biggest in the world. And this one, you know, I honestly see this as probably being the easiest 2X of all the stocks I'm gonna mention in this list, okay? I and mean, like I said, I'm confident that all these stocks will 2X over the next five years, but this is one I'm the most confident in of the bunch, okay? I have major positions in this stock, okay? This is going to a 1.5 to $1.6 trillion company over the coming years, okay? Here's the thing, when you're looking at Facebook, okay, you have the Facebook platform, which has over 2 billion plus members on it, okay, logging in every day. Then you have WhatsApp, over a billion people around the world use that. Facebook Messenger, over a billion people plus use that. You have Instagram, which is the most important social media, in my opinion, for the next decade. That has well over a billion people using that, okay? And then you get Oculus, Oculus is the number one player in virtual reality and has a very good probability of this being the number one player in virtual reality long term. We've heard a lot of hype around augmented reality in virtual reality over the past five years, okay? And all that hype is basically because 2020 through 2030 is gonna be crazy growth for virtual reality and augmented reality. And Oculus legit has one of the best opportunities to be one of the biggest players, if not the biggest player in that market, okay? Over 2 billion people in the world are logging into at least one of these every day, okay? Every day, at least one of these. That is an epic, epic number, all right? So, you know, to, to kind of get the scale around, you know, this stock, it's hard to even like, you know, wrap your mind around the type of numbers they do, okay? Now, there's a company that's gonna grow this year, a little under 20% likely. We'll see where this next quarter comes in at. Could be a really great quarter and they actually end up still exceeding 20% growth in current year. Remember, there's a company that a lot of small businesses advertise on them and obviously a lot of those small businesses were hurt very substantially in March, April, May when their businesses had to kind of be forced to be closed, okay? So to still be growing the way they're gonna grow this year is amazing. But here's what's really exciting, a reacceleration of growth in 2021, and you don't see that often in companies, okay? And they're finally reaching big, big numbers now, okay, when it comes to FB. In 2021, that should be the first year ever where this company has over a $100 billion revenue number top line, okay? So, and this is a company that's gonna grow 20% plus, in my opinion, for several years to go in the future, okay? Just several years into the future, they're gonna grow 20% plus. And not only that, 
after that, they're still gonna grow t like double digits for like the next 10 years. Like it's just like impossible for me to see the revenue numbers not going up at least 10% plus per year for literally this entire decade. But 20% still is in the bag in my opinion for the next several years, okay? And when it comes to FB, look at the EPS growth, okay? They kind of took a breather on, you know, profitability while they tried to, you know, get a, get a handle on their business overall and the, the drama they were involved in back in 2017, 2018, 2019. And that's fine, okay? But now they're gonna start having the profits pour in once again. 643 EPS last year, 933 expected this year. Don't be surprised if that number comes in at $10 plus, okay? 2021 expected from analysts on average, $10.47. Don't be surprised at all, at all, if they come in with an $11 to $12 EPS number. I think, you know, it used to be several years back, you know, the FB would come in with these profit beats that would just blow everybody away on Wall Street, okay? They'd be like, what? I can't even believe what. Those days are coming back, in my opinion, over the next few years, okay? And uh, it's gonna be a fun show to see, needless to say, okay? The level of disrespect this stock is getting is the most I've seen in the stock market, okay? It's ridiculous. I mean, I'm talking level of disrespect 100 on the stock, okay? The 4P on the FB is 25? It's, that's gotta be the silliest thing I've seen in the stock market. This is the most disrespected stock in the entire stock market by a mile. And it's not even close. It's ridiculous. I mean, the market in general trades at like a 4P of 20 or so, okay? To have this stock just a little above that is silly. Plain silly. We're talking about a company that has you know, 10, 20 years of massive growth ahead of that. It's just, it's absolutely ridiculous, okay? So yeah, the valuation will change in the upcoming years. I think the big thing that's gonna get the valuation to change will be the fact that they start smashing EPS numbers over the next few years, and then all of a sudden Wall Street's gonna wake up and be like, oh yeah, the FB is back, baby, okay? Now, balance sheet wise, you're talking about a top five balance sheet in the world? They're gonna be able to buy back a ton of shares over the next five years if they want to. They're gonna be able to acquire game-changing companies in Silicon Valley if they want to. They're gonna be able to acquire companies that are huge around the world if they want to in coming years. They're cash loaded to the sky, right? $55 billion in cash. I mean, that's just a ridiculous number. It's a top five balance sheet in the world. Not just that. This company has the best one-two in the stock market in corporations period okay there's no one out there that can touch these two together okay zuckerberg and sandberg they are the creme de la creme okay a lot of companies have great teams amazon's got a great team tesla mass a great team apple's got a great team microsoft's got a great team a lot of great teams no one's got a stronger one two than these two folks okay there's just them and then there's everybody else as a one two punch okay you know people want to talk about flexing all the time okay the, the biggest flex I've seen maybe ever in my life was this, okay? You know, the president, vice president have a meeting with, you know, what was supposed to be all the, the most important, like, you know, executives in the world, okay? And, like, Sheryl Sandberg is such a powerful number two that they were able to send her, okay? Jeff Bezos is there, Tim Cook is there, all the lead dogs, but like, like, like literally this company is so important that they got a seat right next to the vice president and then that company sends their number two in charge over there. Like that was the biggest flex I've ever seen in the history of business. Like people think like, you know, some of these other things are flexes. I'm like, that's, that's next level, okay? When you can say we're this powerful that we're gonna get a seat next to you guys and then we're gonna send our number two. But that just shows you the power of Sheryl Sandberg and the power of the company in general, and by the way, when they do those seating arrangements, they're not done by accident, okay? You don't get to pick where you sit. They're done for reasons, okay? And they said they're number two. This is the biggest flex I've ever seen in my life, okay? Instagram. Instagram redesigned its home screen for the first time in years very recently. They're starting to take shopping super serious, okay? Look out for Instagram shopping to emerge as a massive service over the next five years, where it, right now it's a very small business. I think that's gonna grow into a giant business over the coming years. This is actually something I see them succeeding with, okay? Instagram's tried some other things in the past, like Instagram TV and a lot of those I'm just like ah, I don't really know about that Instagram shopping a hundred percent believe that will be a huge success okay so over the next five years when it comes to Facebook stock okay here's what you have the amount of ads shown on their different platforms is going to go up the ad rates are going to go up substantially over the coming years okay Oculus business is going to take off from being a very small business over the past years to being a giant now 
the shopping and commerce is going to go through the roof for this company. And also, you know, the Facebook, if we're looking out five years from now, I think Facebook is going to be looked at as one of the most important companies in the world when it comes to commerce going through their platform and shopping in general. Okay. And the cash flows the business will produce over the next five years are going to be ridiculous. So the company can buy back shares. They can buy back other companies. They can do whatever they want. Okay. So when it comes to FB, it's, it's just an easy double from here. Okay. You know, it's been an easy double for a while. Uh, it'll have completed that double since I got in it, which I think my average cost for this company might be like 153. And that double is almost completed and it's going to double up again easily from there. And I still stand by my statement. I said in the past, I think this will be the biggest company in the world long term. I stand by that hundred percent. Okay. Number three, a fire stock up here. This is the other ad giant. Okay. When I say the other ad giant, I hope you guys know what it is. It's Google McDougal. This is another company that is going to likely double from here. Okay. You know, this is, this is a company that's going to the two trillion plus dollar club over time. When it comes to Google, obviously, you know, they own a lot of different businesses. Okay. The main you should think about is a Google search, their cloud business, YouTube, what you're watching this on, obviously, right? Android and their hardware business, which they have a ton of different hardware products and that business has, you know, become a multi-billion dollar business for this company now at this point in time. Okay. That's what you should really be thinking about when you think about Google. Those are the big dogs. Okay. And by the way, YouTube TV, huge potential for YouTube TV long-term. I actually just got YouTube TV literally in the past like week or so. It's like 65 bucks a month. I loving it so far. Okay. Loving it. Like it's crazy because they're using the algorithms that you, they use on YouTube for this YouTube TV. And so like, if I ever go on there, it knows what I want to watch. And I, I'll be honest, I'm a pretty simple guy. Like I'm either watching like uh, football or I'm watching like uh, CNBC. So, <laughs> but every time I turn the TV, it knows I want to watch either like ESPN or like CNBC <laughs> needless to say. Okay. Current year wise company that's going to grow, you know, double digits, but low double digits because it got hurt obviously very bad from Rony Rona. Okay. But huge reacceleration growth expected next year to 20% plus once again, when it comes to Google McDougal, this is a profit beast. $51.92 expected for current year. They'll likely beat that number. And then next year, expected to do $61 in some change next year. Okay, so serious EPS numbers. They have the number one balance sheet in the world with over $132 billion dollars in cash and cash equivalents. And that number will likely grow to 140 billion plus after this upcoming war quarter. So, I mean, goodness, I mean, wow. You know, they, they are the Kings of balance sheet. It's always, you know, it's been between them and Apple for a long time. Apple had the crown. I used to always call Apple the best balance sheet company in the world, but, but Apple's moved to number two. Okay. Google McDougal now is the creme de la creme balance sheet company in the world. Okay. When it comes to Google, they build the best algorithms in the world. Okay. That's what makes Google so powerful. The search. Okay. That's what makes YouTube so powerful. The algorithms, the algorithms, they, they build the best. Okay. You can't think of a company that does it better. The number two probably is maybe Facebook. That's probably who I would consider Facebook. And then after that, probably Amazon. Okay. They're the best at this. Okay. And when you're building algorithms, like, like what is that at the end of the day? It's artificial intelligence. So you're looking, I mean, there's so much talk about artificial intelligence over the past several years and artificial intelligence is going to be the future. Google's the biggest player in that market. They're number one There's them and there's everybody else. That's just a flat out honest truth. Okay. So when you're buying Google, you're essentially buying the number one artificial intelligence company in the entire world. And that is worth a few dollars needless to say. Okay. So absolutely amazing there. Okay. When you look at Google, it's at a Ford P of let's say about 32 right now. Okay. Which seems a little high because the market trades at what 20 or whatever, but the Google, you're talking about the number one balance sheet in the world. You're talking about the, the most incredible products in the world. You're talking about the number one artificial intelligence company in the entire world. And you're talking about platforms that are the most relevant in the world, right? I mean, you know, YouTube's just going to continue to be a bigger and bigger beast in the future. Google search still does its thing. I still use Google search a million times a day. And if you look at a company like Microsoft, for instance, right? Another amazing company, a Microsoft deserves a lot of respect, but they trade a, a Ford P of 32. The fact that that company is, you know, uh, trades a little higher than Google is ridiculous. I mean, at the end of the day, Google will far outgrow Microsoft in revenues and net income 
And it's not even gonna be close over the next five years, and I can guarantee you that. It's not even gonna be close, okay? And so when you look at it from that perspective, you just realize Google is another one of those undervalued stocks. So yes, Google is stock number three of five up here that is gonna double up here in the future, okay? Stock number four of five. Get ready for the most controversial one on the list, okay? Well, maybe it's between, you know, number four and number five are both controversial for different reasons, okay? I think those other three I just did, I think those are like, I don't even think those should be controversial at all. I think it should be like, everybody should be like, yeah, those stocks are gonna double over the next five years. The other two, I can understand them being controversial and for different reasons, okay? But number four of five up here is Shopify stock, ticker symbol SHOP, okay? So this one has a market cap of 128 billion. This is the smallest company by far and away that's on this list, but it's still a big company. It's over $100 billion market cap, okay? But what makes Shopify such a controversial stock versus some of these other stocks is a trailing P and Ford P. Because people see these numbers and they say, that looks like a bubble. That looks ridiculous, okay? Trailing P of 642, Ford P of 270, okay? I can tell you, Amazon stock traded at levels way higher than that in the past. And look at how Amazon stock's done over the last 10, 20 years, okay? And so just like keep that in mind real quick, okay? Now, when you look at Shopify, here's the thing with this company. They're gonna be a massive grower for the next decade plus, okay? Current year, they're expected to have over 80% revenue growth, okay? Next year, analysts have this company growing 32%. That's laughable, laughable. I laughed out loud when I saw that number. They're gonna grow far better than that, okay? Next year, Shopify is gonna do four to four and a half billion dollars, in my opinion, top line revenues, okay? So yeah, this company is absolutely a growth monster, okay? And this is not a business that's focused on profitability at all right now, and they shouldn't be. It's just like Amazon was not a, 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 you know, focused on profit for a long time, okay? So people wanna look at the current PE and forward PE and they say, oh, no, no, that's a bubble. And it's like, you, you know, I, that's not really the right way to do things. Is this company even focused on profitability? They're focused on top line. It's all about that top line right now and growing the pie as big as possible for this company and reinvesting every dollar back into the business. So at the end of the day, you can hopefully be a trillion dollar company in the future, okay? 2025 and after, that's when EPS will boom for this company. The next five years, it's all about that top line growth. I expect them to have much better EPS in future years than they do now, but it's not like that's the center of attention for this company. That's just like the after product. The real thing is gonna be that top line growth year after year after year after year for this company over the next several years, okay? When you look at Shopify, the company is so much more relevant than it's ever been any at any time in its history, okay? They're doing big deals everywhere. Every time you look up, they're doing a big deal with a big company, okay? Look at Walmart now. On the Walmart Marketplace, you can use Shopify through there, okay? So many websites are ran by Shopify, but you never even know it because Shopify doesn't really put its branding everywhere, and they have so many different design templates and things like that, but man, I mean, most of the time when you're buying something, Shopify is likely running that, okay? I was buying something from, you know, I was buying some very good food company product the other night, right? Buying some like burgers and stuff like that. And I went ahead and I did a little research and I found out, oh yeah, this company's using Shopify to basically have its whole like process go through. Then I found out about Shopify Pay, which is a huge growth vector for Shopify in general. They're doing deals everywhere, okay? Shopify and Facebook and Instagram have done a deal recently, that that's gonna be a huge growth factor. Like remember, I talked about how Instagram, I see that being as one of the most important platforms for shopping in the future, in commerce in general. Guess what? A lot of that's gonna be on the back of Shopify, okay? Shopify is a game changer there, okay? And it's interesting. When you think about Shopify versus Amazon, it's interesting because Shopify is kind of looked at as like the good guys, okay? Shopify is looked upon as like the helpers of businesses, small businesses, and you know, letting people like run their own things and whatnot. Amazon's this, you know, looked at as the bad guys. And the reason Amazon's looked upon as the bad guys is because of their Amazon basics business and because of all the data that Amazon collects. So, you know, basically, Amazon's like selling so many commoditized items now. Now on their websites, it's ridiculous. And guess what? You look for something, a lot of times they rank right at the top. You type in like double A battery and boom, it's right there. You type in like tripod and there's an Amazon basics uh, like tripod right there. And so a lot of a lot of sellers look at Amazon as, you know, you can look up the controversies in the past. I mean, it's consistent all the time, but a lot of these sellers just get mad because they feel like Amazon takes all that data and then they realize, oh, we can make a bunch of 
bunch of money off this. Let's go ahead and come out with our own product and sell it on there. And then just, you know, it rubs a lot of these sellers the wrong way. And they start looking at this company in a very negative light where Shopify is kind of looked upon as the good guy. But both have their pluses and minuses at the end of the day. And they don't directly compete all the time. They do compete some, you know, some ways and some other ways. And as Shopify gets bit bigger and bigger, they'll compete more and more but they're not like the most direct competitors, okay? But they both have pluses and both have minuses. For instance, okay, let me give you an example of, you know, something I might wanna sell on Shopify if I was trying to sell on Shopify versus Amazon. So let's say I was coming out with uh, coffee mugs, okay? And I wanna start selling coffee mugs in all the descriptions of my videos, okay? And they're like, holy smoke, this ain't no joke of mugs, okay? Let's say I wanted to do that. Would I sell through Amazon or would I just set up a Shopify store? I'm just setting up a Shopify store. I'd get in the Shopify system, I'd pay them their monthly fee or yearly fee or whatever, and boom, I'm gonna start selling my mugs on there, okay? On the, on the flip side, let's say I was selling just, you know, I was trying to get like, you know, some manufacturer in China or wherever to basically make me little pancake flippers or something like that, right? Or a little spatula, right? And I have kind of no branding around it. I'm just trying to sell it. Am I gonna set up a Shopify store or am I gonna just try to list that on Amazon and try to get reviews and ratings and try to rank on Amazon? I'm just gonna do it on Amazon, okay? Because it's nothing special there. So there's different uses why a Shopify store makes sense. There's different uses why Amazon store would make sense, okay? But at the end of the day, when I'm really viewing Shopify, and this is kind of the way you gotta view some of these growth companies if you're ever looking at them, is, is this company gonna be one of the most important big tech companies a decade from now? And I gotta say, I'm pretty darn confident that they will be one of the most important companies in the world in a, in a decade from now. Similar to where, you know, if you look at Amazon 10 years ago, it was like, you know, a lot of people saw them kind of, you know, coming up and growing and growing. And it was like, yeah, oh, there's something there with that Amazon. Maybe they could be, you know, a massive company 10 years from now. And I feel like that's Shopify at this moment in time where they're just starting to get that respect of, wow, this could be a giant in the future. And I, I honestly see them as being one of the biggest tech companies in the world in 2030, or just one of the biggest companies in the world. And so if that happens, they're going to a trillion dollars, okay, by 2030. So there's massive, like, you're not gonna be one of the biggest tech companies in the world, one of the most important companies in the world, not have a trillion dollar valuation in the future, okay? That's honestly probably where I see Shopify going over time. And at $128 billion market cap, it looks like, wow, that's really expensive and the stock's gone up a lot, but dang, when you look at it from a long-term perspective, it's hard not to see the stock going up massively, not just over the next five years, but honestly over the next 10 years as well, okay? Keep in mind, the company's well capitalized with over $6 billion just in cash. They could raise money easily if they want to, no doubt about it. This is Canada's prize jewel, okay, Shopify, and it'll probably be the first company to a trillion dollars in Canada. So to all my Canadian subscribers out there, guys, you got one here, okay? You got one, no doubt about it, okay? So congrats to you guys. A lot of rumors on if it's gonna be Shopify or OVO as far as the first trillion dollar company. And you know, it's all gonna depend on how much more money I spend at OVO if they reach a trillion dollars or not. <laughs> Just kidding, okay? Anyway, Shopify, yes, number four of five, all right? Number five of five up here of these stocks that I believe will double up these big companies, okay, is J. JP Morgan, okay, ticker symbol JPM. This is a controversial one because it's not a super fast growth company like these other ones, okay? It's mostly around valuation and where I see profit growth going for this company over the next five plus years, okay? I'm not gonna you know, talk about this stock for 20 or 30 minutes because guess what? I did that yesterday on financial education too. So if you wanna watch that full video around why I believe this stock is not just gonna be a dividend beast for the next five, 10 years, but it's also gonna well over double up over the next five years or so, check out the video I post on financial education too. Like I said, that's a 20, 30 minute video, go super in depth in JP Morgan stock and why I think I'm gonna make a lot of money with that one. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, if you don't mind, smash the thumbs up. It lets me know you guys enjoy a video like this where I'm covering some of these stocks I think are gonna double up in the future. I also you know, appreciate it because it helps in the YouTube algorithm big time. And also, if you wanna join Stock Hub, you can do so down in the description. Also, I have is like the pinned comment. If you wanna apply for my private stock group, learn how to scale your portfolio through my stream strategies, you can do that as well, the Financial Fortress program. Uh, that is maybe like the second pinned comment down there. Thank you for watching and have a great day.